and I'm sharing the results with everyone. So we have 40% they are based in Asia. Yes, we have people in North America, like usual, hello for everyone attending from North America. I know it's 7 a.m. Maybe we can let us know in that chat where in America you are. Uh, we have some people in the Middle East. 51% uh, of the majority today, and then some people also are attending from Africa. Uh, this session is really for the teachers. So 73% are teachers. Welcome to the coordinator and to the other people who are attending. And I'm so happy to see that 60%, they spend more than three hours at the beginning of the year to know their a student and to get to know their a student. So here we go. We're ready to an official start. A lot of exercises, a lot of ideas. But let's start with a quick introduction. I'm going to start with Jabi, Kirsten, and then go to Mihai. Jabi, can you tell us where you are now and what do you do? Hi, um, I'm Jabi. I'm the POIP coordinator at Yonggiso International School here in Korea. And what time is it now in Korea? It's now, it's 9 o'clock, 9.06 p.m. Good. Kirsten? Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm in Thailand, and um, I've just uh, finished working at a school in Thailand called KIF International School as the PYP coordinator, and I'm now working uh, freelance whenever I get time away from my crazy Facebook group, which is called Global, Global Educator Collective. So um, if you want to uh, join, we're really looking for people to come in from all different uh, nationalities. And at the moment, it's a little bit dominated by uh, people from, let's say, Western cultures. So as I see all these lovely people from the Middle East and Asia, please do jump in and join because we need all voices to, uh, to build common understanding. So sorry, just a little plug, but I'm very excited that you're all here. Very good. Welcome, Kirsten. And uh, don't forget to share the Facebook group in our chat so people, they can join after or during the session. Mihai, our gentleman. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mihai. I'm, I'm a physical educator at Arab International Academy in Doha, Qatar. Um, I love uh, taking students on a journey to improvement. And uh, I'm in love also with the nature and Oman. So I see a lot of you from Oman. So maybe we're going to get to see each other. <laughs> Good. So let me start sharing my screen and see what will happen here. OK. So this, this is back to school, building the classroom community in our region, the Middle East. Most of the school they started this week. And uh, those ideas are for you. And those ideas also are for the coordinators and the leaders who are attending, because the ideas will be very interactive. And you can do them with five years old, and you can do them with a 99 years old person. Uh, I'm Ali, for the people who are watching me for the first time. I'm born in Lebanon. I live in the UAE. I'm currently in Dubai, and it's 4 p.m. in Dubai. I've been in the primary education for 18 years. I'm a PYP lead educator. I'm a published author for kids. Today, you'll have a chance to listen to one of my stories. I love the storytelling, and I will share one of those stories with you. I have a company and I'm working as a freelancer. So the company website is for Generation for Education. And then you have my email as well on the screen for the people who would like to uh, contact me after the workshop. So my main question for the workshop today is, what are some ideas to know your student and to build the community of the learners? And let's start with the first idea. I have eight. Hopefully, I will have enough time to go with all the eight. And alphabet, I'm going to do a naturalistic poem. So the people who are in the chat on Facebook, they need to write in the chat an acrostic poem to describe who they are. So I used my name, Ali, and I wrote A like adventurous, L like loving, and I like impatient. Now, Javi, Kirsten, and Mihai, they are going to practice those exercises live with you. And let <laughs> me check who is the uh, shortest name. And we're going to start with Mihai. So <laughs> it's less difficult for him, hopefully. Okay. And then we keep Kirsten for the end because Kirsten, she needs more time to find words to describe her. <laughs> Mihai, are you ready? Uh, Mihai, yes, I am. Uh, Mihai M from Meaningful 
I from uh, independent, H from, um, oh, honestly, oh. Oh, not really. <laughs> but in the chat is also stuck with the edge. You can do us. But I, I'm, I'm aiming to be uh, honest and humble, you know, more than that. <laughs> a, a is definitely adventurous, uh, an adventure. And the second I is... Um, inclusiveness. Inclusiveness. Okay, Jabi, it's yes. your turn. <laughs> I know. Um, okay, J for joyful. A for adventurous as well, because I love traveling. B, maybe balance, trying to be balanced with what's everything that's happening. Um, B, another B would be beautiful. <laughs> I for, um, how should I say I? Um, I can't you can say pass. For I. <laughs> okay, pass for enough for I, and E is energetic. It's your turn. Hopefully, you have words for all the letters. Oh my goodness, this is so hard. Okay, let me try. <laughs> um, so, K for kind, I for intelligent, R for radical, S for scint scintillating, T for tenacious, E for enthusiastic, wow. and N for... Um, never-ending love for life. <laughs> good, 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 good. So let me tell you that Jabi, Kirsten, and Mihai, they don't know the exercises. So they are exploring those with you live. And that's how we are going to keep the energy and the fun during this session. And this is our first activity. So let me take your feedback. Mihai, Kirsten, Jabi, how did you find the first task? Um, I, I believe it's, it's, it's prompting thinking in a, in a very, uh, let's say, surprising way. So it, it's, it's encouraging reflection and it's, uh, it's, it's a self-reflection, which is, I think, is very productive to communicate with the group in the same time. So it's starting from the individual to the whole group. That's a great approach to, uh, to get to know each other, you know? Okay, Jamie. Yeah. And yeah, and I like the flexibility. Like I can't find anything for I and then you said just pass, it's okay. Just go <laughs> on. So I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. And then we, we go for Kirsten. I I'm I'm uh I'm loving the chat, but that is just amazing. That is zeal, adorable and dangerous. I want to be yeah. that. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, you can really feel your brain going and I was thinking, you know, like yes, it's like, it's kind of identity, but you have to like think like adjectives but like which ones the ones that come to mind are they really me so you also have to like filter and synthesize as well mm. so super fun. And good, good the chat yes is very active and i'm going to pick mona from the chat mona she wrote i'm like mother or oh, open-minded and if i go a little you. bit up because i lost her uh, Near and, you and, 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 you and a like active feel free me hi kirsten and Javi, if you find anything interesting in the chat and you would like to say it aloud because I cannot control everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing also the people on Facebook. We have Kerr uh, or Nell. He said, Nell, N like now, E like empathy, I like intelligent, and N like loud. So, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, somebody's written in French. You'll like this one. Rana's written in French. Revuse, amour, nostalgique, ambitieux. Yes, oh. in French. Good, Kirsten. Mihai also knows some French, maybe. So if people continue uh, texting in French, he can help. Javi, how many languages do you speak? Well, I speak um, uh, our, my mother tongue, which is Ligaynon, and then Filipino, English, a little bit of German and Korean. I'm starting good, to learn Korean now. Good, good, good. <laughs> so I'm going now to give each exercise, and then I'm going to give a version of it. So if you want to make this exercise a little bit complex, you are going to play with all the letters of the alphabet. But we are not going to play it. I'm just giving you the modification. So you can ask from the student who fill a chart where they put all the things they like or they can put all the things that they don't like using all the letters of the alphabets and then playing with all those letters and playing with the name. This is our first activity. Are you ready for activity number two? <laughs> <laughs> so 
Oh, it's it's suspense. <laughs> and activity number two, it's easy one. Still, we are not with the complicated task, I told you. So now you are just getting to know each other in a nice way. You have all those shell on the screen. And you are going to tell me which shell represents you the most. And this time, I'm going to start with the longest name. So Kirsten, it's your <laughs> name to start. And we are going to give some time to Jabi and Mihai to make some <laughs> connection. Kirsten, one of those shell represent you. Which one and why? And okay. the people in the chat, feel free to send us in the chat or on Facebook the number of the shell and why this shell represents you. Let's go, okay. Kirsten. Yeah. Mine is 14 because um, I'm a little bit spiky around the edges and I don't always fit where I'm supposed to fit. I tend to sort of spill out places, um, but um, I'm, I'm very aesthetically pleasing and um, unusual. So I like 14. Okay, Javi, it's your turn. For me, I picked 15. So I think of all the shells, I think this is the only one that has, I think it's two, two of the shells. And the first thing that came to my mind was like um, something to lean on, like, because um, I'm more of like an extrovert. I like company. Yeah. So that's, that, that, that would be my shell, number 15. All right. Uh, Shakira from Oman, bear with me. So number nine, it's a quasi magnificus. I know it's named in Latin. Uh, I picked it up in my last day in Oman teaching in 2002 and it is dangerous, exposes you to risk because it can, uh, it can uh, bite you, it has, uh, it has elements, uh, so you can pick it up only with the gloves. So, um, describes a part of me, uh, a risk taker and uh, uh, try a bit of an inquiry trying to, to, to find out things and to see how they work, their function, right? So nine, quasi magnificus. Yes. Good. Yeah. Any feedback on this exercise um, before we continue? And I give you a variation of the exercise. Let me remind everyone if they would like to send questions, they can send it in the question and answer. And maybe we will have time to answer them during the session or at the end. And keep an eye on the chat. So to tell me if there is anything interesting you would like to read aloud. So who would like to start a feedback on this uh, exercise and hello Rima, Rima is watching from I, I love it because it brings already in the idea of metaphor and like you know this kind of like what what embodies you like how do you how do you view yourself but it, it's 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 aligning with this I with that this idea of metaphor and that you can be represented by an object or or a color and it's very visual as well so it's very easy for children as well just to pick a number because it's so visual, easy for them. They don't have to think, they have to pick from their head, they can pick from here. Yes, okay. Uh, Jabi or Mihai, do you have any comment? Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a, that's a great one from Kushbu, who's saying that uh, he's done this and instead of shell, he, uh, shells, uh, he is or she used, uh, sorry, uh, fruits. So that's great. Great mm -hmm. idea, you know, just to use various resources. Yeah, and Jillian, Jillian I think, um, yeah. she said, like, this allows voice and choice. It's what, what I was thinking as well. And, you know, there are no wrong or right answers. Like, this is who you are. Go and share. Yes. Like, yes. And they're like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, that's really great. And remember, if you are inside the classroom, you can bring those shells. It's very manipulative. They are going to hear them, smell them, touch them, feel them. And if you are on the screen like today, you are connecting with the screen and you are still building relationship. And uh, Kushbu, if I'm not mistaken, she's a teacher. So as she, but she can confirm okay. in the chat. Instead of the fruit, you can also do the leaves of the, of the, of the trees, especially if you have a garden garden around the tree or if you have uh, sorry if you have a garden around the school or even you can use the stones or the rocks so anything that can uh, trigger our emotion and our feelings you can bring it to the classroom and you can use it to interact with your student and to create those kind of positive relationships a science teacher send us uh, uh, Hanin, hello Hanin. She's saying maybe 
maybe we can use animal or we can use plant of, uh, instead of the shell. Mm -hmm. And yes, 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 Kirsten, she's also answering. Thank you, Kirsten, for helping in that. Okay, are you ready for task number three? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> if you're the Let yes. me check the attendees in the chat. Are you ready for task number three? Now I is saying yeah. yep, yes, we are ready. And so we continue. If I am if I am an object, what I will be. If I am an animal, what I will be, if I am a color, and if I am a country. So try to connect and to make those connections. And let me start this time with Jabi. So if you are an object, which object you will be? If you are an animal, which animal? And if you are a color, which color? And if you are a country, which country? Okay, object, maybe a pearl, simple but elegant. Um, animal. Um, <laughs> um, a dog, man's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, color, purple. I love purple. Um, country, definitely Philippines. That's more fun. Yeah. Okay. It's so, Kirsten, are you ready for the following one? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> if I were an object, I would be a telescope because I'd like to be able to see very, very far. If I were an animal, I'd definitely be an elephant because elephant is my spirit animal. Um, if I were a color, it would be between heliotrope and teal. I can never decide, but probably the day heliotrope. And if I were a country, I'd be Colombia because Colombia is the only country that I've lived in that has absolutely everything of landscape and diversity. It has the most diverse nature of anywhere else in the world. And it has the most incredible culture and the most delightful people. Then I should invite you to Lebanon, Kirsten. We have all this diversity, but in a very small country. Why? So why? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, if I'm on an object, uh, uh, it's definitely a blender, OK? <laughs> They, they, uh, they green shake and nutrition, uh, nutrition assured. If I'm an animal, it is a wolf. Uh, it connects me from maybe the very essence of myself, uh, exploring uh, sometimes individual in the middle of the nature, taking risks and so on. Uh, and uh, it's related to a book which I really like about uh, Stephen Wolf, Hermann Hesse. Uh, a color, if it's a color, it's, if I'm a color, it's green, great connection with the nature, and a country is definitely Oman. For all our friend in Oman, Mihai is in love yeah. Uh, yeah. with Oman. Okay, so if you would like to share anything from the chat, Jabi, Kirsten, Mihai, something that attracted your attention, or if you would like to comment on the uh, exercise before we move to the following activity. I think we can that see. One for... Go ahead, Sorry. Mihai. No, go ahead. Ladies first. <laughs> Such a gentleman. Um, so I was just going to say that, you know, it, it kind of stretches you a little bit more. And I think it's good to like introduce it with a visual first. So you get the practice of like what this medical idea might be. And um, I think that, um, it, yeah, it was like it was really more stretching. And I think that you could you could start this maybe more, more simply with, with kids who were maybe less reticent. Right. Maybe four is a lot. Um, they need some practice, I think, to fully build up to four. But it was certainly super fun, like trying to choose. Trying to choose was hard. Very good. I told you the exercise will become more and more complex. So imagine yes. if we are doing this at an early level, maybe we can give them choices. We can live the less choices. You can change the things that I decided on. And uh, Islam is telling a nice exercise, especially for the first grade. I'm happy to hear that you are able to do this exercise with the lower primary. I would like to say hello for the people who are watching us from Palestine. 
and who are interacting also on, on Facebook. Let's move and see what do we have next. So next, it's a moment where I'm going to read aloud one of my stories. And for the people who don't know, I'm a published author. So I have uh, picture books. I write in English, in French, in Arabic. And today I'm sharing one of those stories. And it's about the importance of the name. So Jabi, Kirsten, and Mihai, be prepared. You are going to tell me why do you have this name? But after the story. So is your name has a story? Now for everyone attending in the chat, again, while you are listening to the story, let us know if your name has a story and what is the story behind your name. Now, uh, Rana, she wants the story in French. For sure, I can share the story in French, but now I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it aloud in English. The story also exists in Arabic on my YouTube channel for the Arabic speakers. I will stop sharing the screen now and I'm going to do a new share. So now we are going to the video. <clears throat> Let me know that if you are able to see my, uh, my screen, Kirsten, Mihai, and Jabi, yeah? Good, so is the screen, uh, you are able to see the screen? Yes. Yes. I'm going to start the video and then I'm going to read. Okay, let me give you a context a little bit. In Arabic, when I say Nakhla, Nakhla is the palm tree. But also you can find boys who has the same name. So for all the people who are new to the Arabic culture, in the Arabic culture, we use name of object, name of animals, name of flowers to call our kids and to give our kids a name. And just to give you a small example, my daughter, her name is Taif, and Taif is the rainbow. So when someone asks her, what is the meaning of your name? She will say a rainbow. Some girls, they have a name like Najma. Najma means a star. So our story today is about a palm tree and the palm tree in Arabic is called Nakhla. So hopefully you will find what is this, what is behind the story uh, after reading it and after watching this beautiful animation that my friend Zahir prepared and the beautiful illustrations from my friend Alexandra. And uh, let me stop uh, talking about the story and start reading it aloud. Nakhla, the palm tree. In the middle of the desert, in the middle of a green oasis, this tree was born. I'm going to tell you the story of Nakhla, the palm tree. All the children gather around the tree to relax after a hard day. All the men gather around the tree to avoid the sun. All the women gather around the tree to celebrate the birth of a child or the wedding of a girl. Everyone enjoys the fruits. Everyone lives in peace. <clears throat> One day, a strange man visited the oasis. I'm looking for oil, he said. Everyone was surprised. They didn't understand what he wanted. The man had a strange equipment and started moving around the tree. I found it, he said loudly. A little boy came and asked the man, what do you want? The man replied, tomorrow, we will cut this palm tree and extract oil. Everyone started crying. At night, 
everyone was silent. In the early morning, when the man wanted to cut the tree, the sand started moving and the sky became dark. The man began to scream, but no one heard. Suddenly, he heard the tree saying, I will help you if you decide to leave from here. The man agreed quickly. Palm roots stopped moving and the sand too. The young child said to the stranger, why do you sleep under Nakhla, the palm tree? And yesterday you said you want to cut it. The man asked, is the name of the tree Nakhla? The child replied, yes. The man added, my name is Nakhla, and he kissed the boy. The man climbed the tree and never came back. Some people say he became a star in the sky. Others say he became one with the tree. But what we really know is everyone lives in peace. So this is the story of Nakhla, and this is the story of the man called Nakhla. And now I would like to hear the stories of your name. Why you were called Mihai? What is the story behind the name? Let's hear those stories. Do you like your name? You don't like your name? So I'm happy to hear those stories. And the people on Facebook and on the chat, feel free to send us the stories of your name. Do you like your name or you don't like it? And if you want to comment on the story as well, feel free to comment on the story. Mihai? Yeah, uh, I'll just paraphrase it that uh, one name doesn't fit all, you know, so uh, uh, we are all so different. And uh, beside the fact that the name, like in my case, has a religious origin, is the name of a saint, which uh, Mikha Mikhail was the same uh, as God, the, the translation. I think it's what in, in essence is what we make out of our names, what meaning are we adding to it? And if we go back to this acrostic poem that you have used it at the beginning of the session, uh, I think my, my name uh, is related to, to passion, to adventure, uh, to uh, a highly physical uh, profile and oriented on this and uh, describing myself as a very difficult uh, friend but uh, trustworthy that's it that's the meaning of me huh? <laughs> thank you hi thank you and as you know also my name has a uh, islamic and religious connotation it was my grandfather name and whenever i travel these day it makes my life very complicated but i still love it and i still love traveling jabi are you ready for the story of your name I, yeah, I wanted to comment on the video while you were reading. I think that was very engaging because uh, kids are just used to, you know, teachers um, holding the book or with the taking picture of the book and then flip it. Um, but that was, that was amazing. I, I love that. Thank you. And Thank you. beautiful story. Um, if, do I like my name in the beginning? No, honestly, I don't like my name. It's like a boy's name. Um, and I don't know anyone named Jabby. But eventually, I learned to embrace it, and I like the uniqueness of my name. Um, it's supposed to be Abby, which means my father's joy. Um, I'm the, I'm the only girl. I have three brothers. And then, because everyone in the family starts with a J, then my mom just decided to add J, and now that's why it's Jack. <laughs> so you have this also in Philippine. We know many, 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 many Arab words. They also choose the same, and they give their kids the same letter at the beginning, or they play with yes. the names to create some rhymes. So thanks for sharing this, and thanks for learning about the culture, uh, Jabi. Kirsten. First of all, that was so beautiful, the story. And I, I, I loved the, the, the slow animation. It was just so lovely to, to see that. So thank you so much for that share. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to do, do my whole name. My, my name is a little um, 
it's a little odd. My mother wanted to call me Lisa. So, um, but she tells, she used to tell this story that when I came out, I didn't look like a Lisa because apparently Lisa's uh, long with oval faces and I was around fat blob, according to my mother. So she didn't know what to call me and I didn't have a name for a while. My grandmother's name was Mary and my mother wanted to call my grand me after my grandmother Mary, but she said it was an un unlucky name. So I actually have the garlic um, for Mary as my middle name, which is Vari. And nobody can tell us where Kirsten came from. And it's, 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 a, it's a Scandinavian name and it actually means anointed one. And um, it's quite an embarrassing name for me because um, I'm, first of all, I'm not with the greatest the deepest respect to religious people i'm not in the least bit of religious and i basically carry a name that means um christ mother of christ so it's <laughs> but well I, I do love my second name my second name is derward and i really hated it when i was at school um it's actually an adopted name by my adopted father my original surname is gun which means either neither either peace nor war is a scottish clan name but door word I learned means like the doorkeeper or the door guarder, the door opener. And so I really like that. So I try to think of myself as the person who opens doors for people. I'm so interested uh, uh, talking to uh, Hamas Duhi. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it very well. And uh, she doesn't like her name. It has an Armenian origin and look to all those beautiful stories about the name on Facebook. I have Dahlia who's saying that Dahlia is a beautiful flower and uh, her uncle uh, brought those flowers when she was born. And so that's why she got this name. Uh, Jillian, hello Jillian. So Jillian, uh, uh, I love my name as it's unique and my middle name is Beauty and it's my grandmother name. So all those stories about names are going, we are going to give you another version or another activity. If you don't have access to my story, you, you can find on the internet a very beautiful text. Um, and this text is called My Name by Sandra uh, Cineros uh, from House on Mango Tree. And she talks about her name Esperanza and about the Spanish language, about her grandmother. And so the story is full also of messages about the culture, the beliefs, the connection, and the values. Ali. Oh, you enjoyed learning yes. those stories about the name, Mihai? Yes, so uh, I, I read a very interesting comment made by uh, Rana in French. And she said that uh, she she doesn't know the meaning of uh, her name and she that's definitely a, a a point of inquiry for her so that's that's, that's my... good 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 so this is the purpose of those exercises to provoke the thinking to look at our name from a different perspective and to create those connections and especially if you are in an international school with a student coming from different backgrounds it's always interesting to hear the story behind the name now before uh, the following activity is an activity where i ask from mihai kirsten and jabi to prepare it in advance so if we are talking about the online learning you all know that we need synchronous task and asynchronous task. So the first asynchronous task that I gave to Mihai, Kirsten and Jabi, it was to take a photo of what do they see from their window at home. And this is my photo. So I'm modeling the exercise for you. And from the window of my home, I can see a swimming pool, I can hear the birds, and I can smell plants and the garden. Would you like to see Mihai photo? So we are traveling now to Doha and to see what do we have and what can we see in Doha. Mihai, you are able to share your screen. Hopefully it will be an easy task to show us the first photo and uh, what do we see from your window? And then you follow the same structure. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? and you need to unmute yourself for the exercise. Sure, uh, if you can uh, allow me allow to, it? Yeah. To, to, uh, to skip me, to, to let yes, me- I gave you the permission. Task, but 
can I can I describe it? Ah, okay. So you want to skip the task? And I I just want to describe it. I I I think it's um, the oral description. Maybe it's it's more catchy. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What do you see from your window? I see. I hear. I smell. So from my uh, from my window, I see another building. I I hear birds, and I smell different flavors of Middle Eastern cuisine. Okay, good. And now let your imagination go and imagine what do we see from uh, Mihai's window. Gabby, let me have a look of what do we see from your window. Okay, I... Uh, it's a window from uh, my workplace. I ah, hope that's the workplace. So I hope are you that's able okay. to share your screen? Yes, I can okay. share because I got home late. But let me just open it now. And um, then maybe you need to prepare your following activity, Mihai, if you have the the yeah. photo. If no, it's okay about the box and the object. Yes. So Kirsten as well, if you prefer. Okay, so we are able to see the uh, screen of Jabi, and this is the view from the office. Wow. So, what do you see? What do you hear? And what do you smell? So, for me, I see green. I love Korea. It's just all green. <laughs> um, I smell the. At the earlier it was a bit raining, so yeah, it smells it smells good. It was okay, fresh. Um, and what was the last one, Ellie? And so I see, I hear, I smell. I hear the birds. Okay. I hear the Thank birds. you, Jabi, for sharing yes. this. Kirsten, it's your turn. I had a chance to see your photo. That's why I kept it till the end. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I was worried you might need it. So let me share. Okay, there we go. Um, all right. I'm very blessed at the moment, people. I am one of the most blessed people in the whole world at the moment. Let me just present oh. this to you. So, yeah. oh, who would like to travel? So. <laughs> I'm jealous. It, it, it's dark now, so I can't actually see this. But what I can see usually is I can see trees, the sea reaching out endlessly usually clouds because it's monsoon season and plenty of beautiful birds. And what I hear and what I hear right now is I hear the waves crashing and the birds chirruping and the insects croaking and just the, the luscious sound of the waves coming in the window. And what do I smell? I don't actually smell very much. It's very fresh, mm. a little bit of salt sea air, but it's mostly what I feel is the it's the wind on my skin because there's big windows here and they're open so that the breeze is just coming in. We don't even need an AC. It's beautiful. Nice. Right. And Kirsten, keep your screen because uh, the following exercise will start with you so we don't waste time sharing screens. And let me take your feedback about the exercise. So imagine all your students are taking those photos, posting them on Padlet or CISO or any space for collaboration, and they are putting those comments. I use the five senses, but then you can change the sentences or the starting point. And how did you find the exercise? It's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's getting to know. It's nice to to see their view from where they are and what they think about it. Yeah, it's really, it's nice to, especially those who are just starting their school year, just yeah. to start that connection, Good. Um, building that community within the class. And even the teacher would share something and I'm sure the kids would be thrilled, you know, yeah. knowing their teacher is also a, a human being, you know? Okay. And yeah, so that's, it's, it's great. Thank you, Ali. Good, good. Still, I, think it, on the I think it gives context and I think it's also great tuning in um, for, for the concept of location for those of us who work with concept based. It's a great tuning in for the concept of lo location because everybody can share their location and then you're already into like describing and so you're already leading them into like a descriptive language type of exercise that they could then you know use use that to develop some writing from afterwards. So there's a lot of places this could go as well, which is what makes it really interesting as well as engaging. 
And if your students are still in lockdown in a different country, in a different location, it would be also great to have those sharing moments and to build those connections by bringing those physical and real environment around us to a virtual environment where we are connected now on Zoom or any other application that you are using. Okay. The following exercise, I ask again from Ihai, from Kirsten, and from Javi to take to, to bring three objects that they represent who they are, to put those objects in a box, to take a photo of the box, and then the title of the activity is called Me in a Box. So let's discover what do we have with Kirsten. And, okay, so uh, uh, yeah. So first of all, apologies, because I'm not actually at my home, so I don't have a lot with me, and I don't have a box. And the picture is not a real picture, but it is a picture by the same, a painting by the same artist that I have a painting from. So it's, it's the same message, really. So, the, the, so if you imagine that this is inside a box, this is me in a box. Do you want to explain those three items? I just wanted, do we have a minute? Maybe the participants might like to draw some conclusions themselves. Do you want to see sure. what they say? Sure. So if we want to make it again, I like inductive. I like inductive. You know and can <laughs> you give a guess why Kirsten has those three objects or artifacts and uh, go ahead in the chat? Do you want to give a guess? Why I'm going to give some clues. Yeah. And I can so give some Jillian is saying you love to read. Javi and Miha, you can also be involved. Do you want to give a guess why Kirsten has those? She's coffee addicted. Uh, she's a yeah, real person. There's unicorn. I think that's a unicorn in color pink. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> choice. I'm well, it lover. wasn't my choice. And actually, I never drink coffee. <laughs> But it wasn't my choice. This, this, this um, particular um, cup was a, a hostess gift that was given to me by a good friend of mine. And she gave it to me because she thinks I'm a magical creature like a unicorn. She always says that I'm connected to the vortex and the universe like nobody else she's ever known. So she, she picked this for me because that's how she thinks I'm unusual like, and magical like a unicorn. But the reason that I put it there was not just because it's a friendship connection, but because I'm so committed now to carrying this around with me. This is like a really important part of me that when I go out, I take it with me, that I take my little container with me. I never take a plastic. I never, if I do stop for a drink or a fruit juice, I make sure they put it in mine thing. So that's, it's something that's become really important to me in the last four years. Mm. So yes. And yes, yes, the reading, but I particularly <laughs> chose this particular book. Um, not so much for what it's about, but um, just because um, it's not just about reading, but it's about language. And I, it just stood out to me. I actually found it in a secondhand bookshop down here where, where I love going. And it just stood out to me that the, 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 the author's name was, was French. And I wanted, and Tana just made me think of like something exotic. And this idea of likeness, like what are we like? Um, so it was a, it was a, I just saw it, so I grabbed it because I wanted to put a book in my in my in my box, and uh, a real paper book. There's nothing like holding a paper book in your hands. I love reading on Kindle and everything, but it's so yummy to have a paper book. And the 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 art. Well, it, it the art is a lot because uh, first of all, I'm deeply deeply connected to Africa and particularly to Uganda. This is an uh, example by a Ugandan artist, a man called. Daudi Karunji. So if anybody ever came to my home, they would find it's full of art because I buy art from the artists in the country that I village. I like uh, visit. I like to support the artists' um, true work. But Daudi is a very special story. So I particularly picked a piece of his because I want to say that what's important to me is that I continue to grow and that people can continue to grow and that we can all support each other to grow. Because Daudi Karunji used to paint in my friend's garage. And she used to hang his artworks up in his house and invite us all around for wine so that we could buy it. And this guy is now the director of the East African Biennial. He has his own art gallery and he has two pieces in MoMA. So this, this piece of art is not just about me loving art and me loving Africa. It's a significant reminder that when you grasp for like what you really feel inside, like your success potential can be unlimited. It's very powerful very powerful for me. 
Wow, very mm. powerful sharing and connection. Thank you, Kirsten. Mihai, let's move to your side. All right, so I'm going to get out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to share, I, I hope this is, um, I'm not, I'm not going to, do I have to zoom in, Ali? No, no, you're okay. Uh, I think we have this here, right? <laughs> All right, so I, I use this often in, uh, during uh, some of the units. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, uh, say which unit so uh, I, I will let you maybe I will encourage your comments in the chat and um, that's fantastic how uh, students thinking is shaping from it and uh, uh, how their imagination act actually just sometimes gives me ideas of how to to use it if not for intended purposes all the time so um, go ahead and uh, let us know what do you what do you think it's are its potentials you know i usually Come just on. in the in the gym in the in just in the corner of the gym and i just put it on the mattress over there and uh you can definitely spot the inquirers you know <laughs> the students that maybe they're they find your uh, your learning experience boring and they will say like oh there is something else which i'm interested in so here you go and they will drive your lesson to a whole different level you know so um, uh, can we can we maybe uh, see some of the? Um... This one is saying it's a connection uh, to who we are. Okay. They can generate a new and uh, new ideas. It's a spirit connected to spiritual health. Okay, so I, I hope that by now everyone uh, recognizes it, right? So. Uh, I hope so. So it it is um, a fitness roller, right? You can um, you can uh, roll the different uh, uh, body parts on it. Exactly, spiritual health, uh, well-being, and it's interesting uh, that every time I drop it in the gym, as uh, it becomes an inquiry uh, starter. And as you can see, some of the, these are some, uh, I just recorded some of the students' answers. It's a, it's a candle holder in their, their very first glass. It's a cast. It can be a telescope. Uh, it is a shield. Uh, some of them, they kind of uh, grade three there. So, oh, it's an exerciser. You can do exercise with it. And I just like its um, transformational uh, potential that it has you know you can explore different parts of your body but in the same time you can use it to do to uh, do uh, maybe push-ups to do some um, some balances on it so you can explore different uses and why not uh, uh, just to zoom into some different uh, uh, different uh, aspects of uh, a painting I don't know just to offer a different perspective so uh, Okay, good. Nice thank, you, Mihai. <laughs> thank you, Mihai. Uh, thank you, Mihai. Thank you, Mihai. I'm moving to Jabi, and Jabi, she decided to bring the box. Yeah, and I have. Objects. I have the box, and the <laughs> and the objects are actually. Uh, the, yeah, I told Ali earlier, like, yeah, who am I? So the first thing that came to my mind is like, I love to eat. Ooh, so I have like okay. different chopsticks here <laughs> from Korea from Japan when I went to Japan and Shanghai, I can eat anything. I love Korean food, Chinese. <laughs> when I was in Dubai, I love um, hummus and yes, this bread. Is and okay. yeah, I can Good. live there. Like, I think I can be anywhere. Um, that's the first one. The second one is just my, my AirPods. Yes. I love listening to podcasts and I just love to learn about anything and everything. And my third one is my watch. Like time is good, very important. Good, good, good. I'm, I'm mindful of, you know, the time of the people I work with and my own time. Yeah. Very good. So I hope you enjoyed this exercise and I need to start wrapping up my session. So we were able to do six from the eight activities. 
what do I have next for you? I'm going to show you that I prepare, this is me in a box, so just to uh, let the uh, student guess and trigger the thinking. Uh, what do I have next? I would like to make a connection to this book. If you've read or if you know Alfie Cohen, Punished by Reward, in his book he mentioned three C's to make sure that your community is, uh, is built in a nice way. And he says you need to choose the content. The content needs to be engaging, relevant, significant. You need to build a community and spend time to build those community to know your students, where they are coming from, what is their background, and then to give them choice. This is what I try to model in this session. And I hope those exercises, they will be helpful, if not for the beginning of the year, as icebreaker, team building activity, or later on, if you are working in a PYP school and you have some units of inquiry related to the concept of culture, beliefs, values, connection, who we are, or anything else. Remember also to have a positive relationship. You can send letters to your students. You can create a project related to letters. You can share pictures and photos. You can connect via phone if they are in older grade level. Give them choices and listen to them. I would like to thank finally again, Jabi, Mihai, Kirsten, this is our final reflection. What would you like to say? What would you like to comment? People in the chat, feel free also to put your comments and to put your feedback in the chat. If you have any question, maybe I can answer one question before I finish this session. Shall we start with uh, Jabi? Yes. Um, well, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. I really had a lot of fun and it was also great knowing you guys, Mihai and Kirsten. And um, yeah, it's, I'm just, I'm personally, I'm just thinking of, of these are the things that I can do with my team as well, with my co-teachers, like before we start our PD session, like, okay, bring some artifacts, put up display and guess who that person is, you know, something, you know, fun. And, and I think um, we're lucky because we're doing online learning, but we, the teachers are, they go to school, they come to school, they, we can still be able to come to school and, and having that connection is really important. Our teachers are really burned out right now and just really exhausted of all the preparation, but they love what they're doing. And I'm really amazed and I'm really, I feel blessed to be working with them. Um, but yeah, I, this, it has been great. So thank you. Good, Mihai, do you know more about Javi and Kirsten at the end of this session? You're on mute. Mihai, you're on mute. Sorry, okay. Yeah, sorry. So I definitely am jealous and I envy uh, Kirsten's position, you know, like near the sea. Uh, and I, I do share something in common, Jabi, about the, the food and the chopsticks. So that's that's awesome. That's a, that's an attitude and, uh, and a, a food lover for sure. Uh, food for soul, right? Uh, and I, I, do, I do believe that... Uh, in these challenging times, we can only grow, and we can only grow from uh, maybe simplifying what we are doing and reflecting on, on all the good practices, starting from there. So simplifying it and uh, adapting to a new reality, transform it. So uh, having a positive mindset and getting together with the uh, like-minded educators like Ali, Javi, Kirsten, and you guys being present here. So thank you for sharing all of this. That is fantastic. Okay, Kirsten, a final word from your side. Okay, thank you, Ali, for always making things happen and um, also just yeah. making them joyful. And that's really like where we're going with this. I feel it's like getting back to the joy of learning. You know, people who had great strategies, they've, le they've learned how to translate them now. And, um, you know, like a lot of this wasn't, it's not like new, new, but it's like a different twist on it. And so, you know, that's the thing that we're always keeping extending ourselves and coming up with different twists. And if I may, Ali, just to help out the people in the chat, I spoke with a wonderful educator in America recently. Her name is Mallory Penny. She has a company called Better Together Labs, and they have one 
uh, free session also on engagements, which is actually recorded in their Facebook group as well. And it's many more similar type activities of how to get people in, interacting online. So, you know, if that helps people out at all, it's free, it's there, and, and they're really wonderful people. So uh, this, is, this is what we need to do now moving forward. We need to say, what can we do? How can we make it better? And who can we connect with? And funny story, uh, for those of you watching, Jabby and I were supposed to meet in, in March. Um, it's, she was supposed to bring her team to my school in, in, uh, in Bangkok as part of the uh, IB Regional Conference. So finally, we've met now, Ali. Thanks to you. You see, <laughs> the meeting uh, is meant to be, but it's happening virtually without any preparation. Like, I don't know also that you were preparing for this visit. Uh, on this slide, for Generation for Education, you can follow us, you can tweet, you can look at YouTube, subscribe at our channel, uh, stay connected. Next week, we have a plenty of session. And keep in mind, they are in French, in Arabic, and in English. I'm going to send this in that chat for you. I'm going to say goodbye for everyone on Facebook now and stopping the uh, Facebook Live. And thanks again for Mihai and Chabi and Kirsten.